Well, good morning, guys. Um, it is 10 o'clock, and um, according to the plan that I have, I can go about 40 minutes. And so I want us to get started. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, because something happened yesterday uh, with my mute and unmute and whatnot. Um, what I want to do is start. Um, with your antibiotic um, study guide, because at the very end, it says um, you don't have to do uh, or turn in these answers, but they will help you for the final. And so if you want to be uh, getting that out, I do want to say that I've been working on your final um, and it will be between 20 and 30 questions. It's it's going to be more like maybe a mini test or a quiz. So it's not going to be a huge deal. Um, uh, so it'll be between 40 and 60 total points. Um, I will open it up on Monday at 10. You'll have a couple of hours to do it. And then I'm opening it on Tuesday because I do have some folks um, in the nursing program that are taking their final on Monday. So I'm opening uh, again on Tuesday for those who could not take the test. Um, um, and actually anything more specific, what I wanna spend time with is to help you get ready for the final. Um, and I will be sending out an announcement, an email, you know, a little more detail for you about it. Uh, but um, that's, let me let a few folks in. I don't know why it wants to do this. That I have to admit, folks. Uh, let me get Gina. Let me, Gina, are you there? <laughs> All righty. Um, so, uh, what I suggest is that we take your antibiotic study guide, the very last part because I took stuff off of this for your final. In fact, quite a bit. So uh, I want to make sure you're comfortable with the answers. And um, I think I'll go uh, off screen for myself and go to your study guide so we can uh, go down through it. And... I have it here, and I I have no idea. Sometimes this works, and there we go. I see. Okay, so we're going to go down here. I'm going to move down uh, for us. Is there anything on this yet that you would like me to, to hit as I'm passing gingerly by the questions? Yeah, can you go over number seven, please? Number seven. Yeah. All righty. Let me go up to seven. Come on, seven. Oh, yeah. Why have the chemical structure of some microbial drugs been modified into semi-synthetics. Several reasons. One um, has been so they'll, they're more effective. Some, when they're just in their natural state, aren't particularly effective, especially in mass production. So the idea is by tweaking them a little bit, we can make them more effective and often also save some money. <clears throat> so I would say uh, to help them be more effective for the patient. Anybody else? Okay. 
All right, let's go on down then here. Can you actually go over number 10, please? Yeah, number 10. Back up. <laughs> uh, why, oh, yes. <clears throat> why are antibiotics with a very broad spectrum of activity not as useful as one might think? It would be useful, particularly if you don't know what's wrong with your patient. I mean, you may have a very sick patient and you need to figure out something quick and so you're going to give a broad spectrum. But actually, uh, one of the serious problems is that broad spectrum are going to kill off your normal microflora, particularly in your intestines. Um, and so it's best if you not choose that simply because it leads to what I have somewhere later about a super infection where you have an infection, you treat your patient, but then they get an infection on top of that. And often it's very serious, like Clostridium difficile, uh, which uh, is very problematic, especially with the elderly. Um, even in fact, a super infection could be you treat somebody for you know, a sore throat or something, and then they get a vaginal yeast infection. That's actually a super infection. It's on top of the normal infection. So the problem is on uh, number 10 to sum it up, you're more likely to get rid of most of your good micro uh, flora, your wonderful microbiota, and then that opens the door to second infection, which we uh, call, su call super infection. Anybody else have something that you want to add? 26. Pardon? 26. 26. Uh, ready? All right, vancomycin interferes with uh, cell wall formation. Exactly how does it work? Um, it interferes with the, remember the nam to nam the tetrapeptide came down, the tetrapeptide here, and there was bonding between those tetrapeptides. It interferes with the bonding of the tetrapeptides. Specifically, a couple of, um, of, of amino acids involved, but I would simply say it's interfering with the NAM to NAM connection. And once that's not made, uh, the, the sugars start falling off, then you have a very weak cell wall. Okay. Anybody else? All right, we go down here and it says you don't have to turn in the answers to these, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to go over this. So a C-clover um, is a nucleoside analog. Um, so what it does is it prevents um, the formation of DNA. And what did you guys have? Did you guys take a look at this? Um, I got D. Yep, D. That is correct. Uh, so it's very common to use a C-clover for genital herpes. And then number two, antibiotics are derived from all of the following except, and it's actually Staphylococcus. We, we have not found any reasonable um, antibiotics from uh, Staphylococcus. And then important characteristics of an antimicrobial drug include, and if you go down through them, it's actually all of them. So if on the test, I put something of a sort of application uh, question where I say, okay, it's a research company and they are trying to develop a new drug. And what are four qualities that that drug should have? 
and you could put um, you it's delivered readily to the site of infection high toxicity to the cells but it's low toxicity uh, to us um, not many side effects and it remains active in tissue and there's several things um, in the PowerPoint too I, I had broad spectrum drugs that disrupt body's uh, normal flora cause and there we go super infections B and then we go to sulfonamides and those uh, interfere um, with B uh, they're actually metabolic analogs of paraminobenzoic acid I went over that um, in, I think it was yesterday afternoon. Um, and so I can go over that, an explanation of that if you like. But we'll go ahead and go down through this so you get the answers. Aminoglycosides, they're going to attach to the 30S ribosomal subunit. And that would be C as in cat. And then... Um, Number seven, an antimicrobial drug does not inhibit cell wall uh, synthesis. It's going to be A, gentamicin. Uh, that belongs to a different group with effect on protein synthesis. And this is an important idea here. Um, there are few antifungal, antiprotozone, antihelminth drugs compared to antibacterial because of what? And it's really, this is the thing. These are protozoans, helminths, and fungi are all eukaryotes. Uh, and so they're very similar uh, to human cells. And so selective toxicity is, is difficult. That's a very important concept here. And you could even include that in uh, what Basically, um, what a researcher would be looking at, you, you want to leave the cells, uh, human cells safe and sound and go after uh, the bacteria. And then we have nine. It, it is inappropriate to prescribe antibacterial agents to treat colds or flu because what are they? Viruses. They are viruses. And... The thing about that is they don't have cell structure. Bacteria have cell structure. Helminths, you know, all everything we've studied up to viruses in cell structure. Uh, so it's not just that they're not alive. It's the fact that there's, there's nothing we can target. Well, there are things and there are drugs, um, but that's another story. Let's go to 10. Infection of the blank would be hardest to treat with antimicrobial drugs. The problem is the brain because of the blood brain barrier and getting a drug that will go across that blood brain barrier. Beta lactam drugs act by inhibiting the formation of the plasma membrane. What's wrong with that? Well, the key, yeah, the key is this, and I'm going to hit this on the final, that you know the difference between the plasma membrane, which is phospholipid, blah, 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 and the cell wall, uh, which for bacteria is basically peptidoglycans. And number 12, if an question, um, if an antimicrobial agent is bacteriostatic, well, the thing is, it's B. Multiplication of the bacteria will resume upon removal of the agent. Uh, so if you really want to get rid of the infection, you probably want to get a bacteriocide. Um, 13, an antiviral drug that is guanine, a guanine analog 
would have an antiviral, oh, this is this is a good one, um, an antiviral mode of action that. So think about DNA, um, and it has adenine, cytosine, guanine, so forth, thymine. Um, and so if this is mimicking guanine, it is going to block DNA replication. Bless you. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Uh, I had my cat walking over my my keys this morning on the computer. I'm like, no, no, you're going to mess this up. Um, antivirals that target reverse transcriptase. Um, so I would remember what reverse transcriptase is about. That involves HIV. Um, so that's B as in boy. And then we go to 15. Antimicrobial drugs effective against uh, only gram positives. What do you think? They're probably going to be narrow spectrum. And then which organ is responsible for metabolizing? This isn't uh, in anything that I've handed out to you. I was just hoping you recall this from your ANP uh, that is responsible for detoxifying uh, foreign chemicals um, in the blood are, is the liver. Liver is very important in a lot of ways. And then 17, which of the following antimicrobials would be contraindicated for children due to permanent tooth discoloration? This is on your test. Uh, it is tetracycline. You don't want to give kids under the age of about eight, then their permanent teeth are going to come in dark. And it is pretty gnarly looking. An antimicrobial that inhibits cell wall synthesis results in which of the following? Well, the cells are going to be more A, susceptible. Where's my little finger? Uh, susceptible to osmotic pressure. They can't keep their uh, contents inside and they lice. And so that's a good thing to remember. They end up lysing. Um, this is kind of a tricky little deal here. Uh, this particular drug is used to treat cestode infestations. Now cestodes, you have to kind of think back. Hmm. Those are a type of roundworm, and if they're a roundworm, then they're uh, a eukaryote. So this interferes with their microtubule formation. Uh, so several things are going to result from that. One of them would be they couldn't carry out mitosis. And so what would it not affect? So take a look at that. Uh, well, fungi are eukaryotes, helminths are eukaryotes, we are eukaryotes, protozoans are eukaryotes. So the only one that wouldn't be affected are bacteria. Keep that one in mind. I thought it was a cool question. All right, let's go up here to 21. This is another one that you uh, have to think of a little bit. This particular drug prevents ATP generation in mitochondria. So we know uh, that this involves a eukaryote again. Um, you would expect this drug to be effective against, well, gram negatives and gram positives are prokaryotes, they're bacteria. And so they don't have mitochondria. So that's not going to bother them. Uh, let's go down to mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's a bacteria. It doesn't have mitochondria, so that's not going to affect them. Viruses, they don't have organelles or anything. They, they depend solely on their host, so that's not going to affect them. So what's the one left? Yeah, it's C. So this particular drug is pretty effective against helminth infections. So we studied one 
Uh, we definitely talked about one early on, and that was pinworm. Um, then we go to the antibiotic actinomycin D binds between adjacent GC pairs um, and therefore interferes with. So I would definitely know that your final does pick up just a little sort of what I call basic biology that I hope you've gained having taken 181 or uh, a and your A and Ps and all that. Most of you have. Uh, what is the difference between transcription and translation? So transcription is going to be reading the code off of the DNA to make messenger RNA. And then the messenger RNA goes to the ribosome where translation occurs and protein is made. And that goes back to the central dogma, which I make a little note to myself to review that. What is the central dogma? Um, and it's simply the flow of information in the cell where we go from DNA to RNA and finally to protein. So the if we're binding with GC pairs, then we're not going to be able to carry out transcription. Uh, that will be blocked. You can't read the code off of the DNA to make messenger RNA. And you certainly uh, couldn't carry out replication either, although that's not an answer. Most antiviral drugs do what? Um, and it is B, they are nucleoside analogs. They mimic, basically they mimic um, the nu nucleotides. And then um, they can't make their DNA. A broad spectrum antibiotic, and I saw that, I'm gonna go back and fix up some of my misspellings here. Uh, would be a drug that affects many different microbial sites. That's actually, that's kind of tricky, isn't it? Uh, but it's false uh, because a broad spectrum affects many different, um, many different host cells. Gram positive, gram negative, might, might be able to get rickettsias, chlamydias, so uh, 24 is false. And 25, which is the last one there, resistance to many penicillins is the result of cell wall mutations in a variety of bacteria. What do you think? Um, it goes back to uh, what makes bacteria resistant to penicillin? And it's penicillinase. And so the bacteria release the penicillinase or the beta-lactamase, and that makes them resistant to the penicillin. So that is false. Now we get into this. And let me keep track of time. If we have to end because I've got, uh, I really got messed up yesterday afternoon. For you guys who were uh, yesterday afternoon, it finally cut us off. I tried to get back in. I got back in. Everybody was con. And I really, you know, I, I didn't intentionally cut you off. The program, the Zoom cut us off. So if we cut off, um, if you want to email me, if you guys would like to have another session and you can tell me what would be good for you, be happy to do it. Uh, I, I'm just sort of limited by this sort of 30 to 40 minute deal. Antibiotics uh, that target the cell wall have no effect on the existing peptidoglycan. So how does the antibiotic affect bacterial cells? so that the cell walls become weak and the cell lyses. Well, that there's something there. Let me step somebody who'd like in. That has to do with the effect of an antibiotic is only on cells that are growing, cells that are in the process of division, uh, metabolism, 
And um, so the thing is, if the cells are just quiet, and they can be quiet, uh, the antibiotic is not going to affect them. But if they're active me metabolically, they're growing, then it will affect their cells. And then their cells, cells will um, get weak and, and they will lice. Uh, number two, the difference uh, between the mode of action of an antibiotic that attacks the cell wall versus one that attacks the plasma membrane goes back to very key, the, the cell structure, the cell wall, you're pretty much going after the peptidoglycan. Um, and with the cell membrane, you're going after the phospholipid bilayer. Most of the antibiotics that go after the plasma membrane are actually detergents. They can break up the, the lipid there, just like when you wash your dishes and you use detergent and you're trying to get oil off. Same sort of principle. Uh, and so uh, in both cases, the cell is going to lice. Uh, what does selective toxicity refer to with regard to antimicrobial chemotherapy. Um, and, and you guys can use your notes, your uh, PowerPoints, your book. Uh, so I know you filled out your antibiotic uh, study guides and going back there, one of the questions, selective toxicity. You want to, you want to kill the bacteria, uh, but you want to leave the uh, human cells safe and happy and alone. Um, and so if you're designing any antimicrobial chemotherapy, you want to keep that in mind first and foremost. Why are penicillins and cephalosporins low in toxicity to humans? We don't have what? We don't have cell walls. We don't have peptidoglycan. So it's perfectly great for us. I mean, yeah, some people are allergic and pretty badly allergic to penicillin and, and some of those, but, but they actually do have low toxicity. And what is the connection between certain antimicrobial drugs and super infections? And we go back to the fact that uh, Either you have had a patient on an antibiotic for an extended period of time, or it's broad spectrum, and you've killed off their normal flora, their normal microbiome. Now that person is susceptible to secondary infection, and it's usually a part of our normal microbiome that picks up and uh, starts growing out of control, um, like Clostridium difficile, you'll see that a lot in the hospital. Or um, as I mentioned earlier, a, um, uh, an, a vaginal yeast infection. So it's an infection on top and due to messing around with your normal flora. And that's really why we're starting to investigate bacteriophage, the use of bacteriophages, because they would not affect your normal flora. They're very specific. They will target just the particular bacteria you're after. A research scientist developing a new antimicrobial, well, there, there's what I talked about earlier, uh, a new antimicrobial drug, um, what are four attributes that this drug should possess? And your textbook also has a really good list of good things um, that, that you should be thinking about in developing a drug. So I'm getting close to the uh, last here. I wanted to hit viruses, and it does say I've run out of time. Um, what? If you guys would like me to schedule uh, another time and we can go over viruses or if you feel um, that you don't need that, um, that's fine. Um, if you would email me, you just say, well, I, I would like to go over viruses. Do you, 
could we do it in the afternoon before the final? Um, what's your general feeling before I get to, you know, knocked out of here? I'm good. You're good. You don't need any more. I, I think so. We'll see it up on the test. But. <laughs> okay. Well, if anybody would like some extra um, time, uh, I'm happy to do that. And I will be sending out um, probably tomorrow, the next day, a, you know, this is what, how we're going to do the final. Um, I, last thing I want to tell you is if you happen to be a person, and none of you uh, that I see there fit this, but I, I just got a note from our vice president that if you are missing a whole bunch of your work, study guides and tests and the paper and everything, um, they are allowing faculty to withdraw, academically withdraw students. So this wouldn't apply to you guys. You have everything in, you're good, um, and grades look good for everyone. So anyway, thank you for a great job. I've enjoyed you immensely. I'm going to miss you. Um, and I wish you, again, lots of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Bye. Bye. Bye.